Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, uh, and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the Week 6 Thursday Night Football Showdown slate on DraftKings. For uh, this Thursday night, we got a game between the uh, Broncos and the Chiefs. You know, this game probably is going to get a little bit ugly. Uh, we're probably going to see a you know blowout here, if I had to guess. I think Kansas City, coming into this game, they're like 10.5 point favorites, so going to be kind of a lopsided one, but it's still going to be a fun showdown slate. We still got a lot of money up top uh, for the showdown slate. Another millionaire maker, 2.25 million in total prizes um, for DK's you know, main GBP for this slate. So we're going to go from top to bottom and hit on all the playable options, all the guys that I do have interest in for this slate. But as always, before we do get started with the breakdown, um, if you guys do enjoy these DFS videos, if they do help you out, please hit that like button down below. I really appreciate the likes, guys. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And if you guys are new to the channel and if you have never checked out Prize Picks before, Prize Picks is the sponsor of this video. Uh, for those of you that are unaware what Prize Picks is, they are a DFS site more focused on player props. So um, on Prize Picks, you're taking more or less on a player's projection. It is that simple. It's very easy to use. Um, and on Prize Picks, you can make you know, multi sport entries, you can make up to six pick entries, you can win up to 25 extra money. With NBA season coming around the corner two weeks away, I mean, there's going to be a ton of sports going on. You're going to have NHL, which I think started up today. You're going to have NHL, NFL, college football, MLB, um, NBA, all that's going to be going on like all at once. So there's just so many sports right now that you can, you know, get action in. And on, you know, prize picks, again, you can make multi sport entries. You can make a five pick entry with, you know, five plays from five different sports. Um, so it's a lot of fun. You guys definitely should be playing over there. And if you guys are not signed up for Prize Picks yet, get signed up. Use promo code NOAA when you do sign up, and you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. So basically, if you sign up, you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you an additional $50 to play with. You sign up, deposit $100, they'll give you an additional $100 to play with. You just got to make sure that you use that promo code NOAA uh, when you do sign up. But let's go ahead and talk through uh, this short on slate for Thursday night. Again, Broncos and Chiefs. Um, we'll start off at the top. So Patrick Mahomes coming in as the most expensive option, really to no surprise. He's coming in at 12800 by far the most expensive player on the slate, but for, for good reason. I mean, Mahomes, he's been one of the better fantasy quarterbacks, you know, really ever since he's been in the league. And, you know, this season, we haven't seen like a massive ceiling game yet for Mahomes. He's topped out at around 25 DraftKings points, but we know that massive ceiling is always there. He can put up 30 plus DK points any week. This Broncos defense has been terrible this season. This is a matchup that I think Mahomes can have a lot of success in. I mean, the, the Chiefs have, like, what, almost a 30-team total for this game? Like, the Chiefs should be able to put up a lot of points here. Hopefully, you know, Denver keeps it close. Um, they probably won't, but hopefully they do. If they do, I mean, Mahomes could put up a ton of points, a ton of fantasy points here. I do worry a little bit about, you know, if, the, if Kansas City get up to a really big lead, like maybe – the Chiefs, you know, take their foot off the gas pedal. But I think at that point, if that does wind up happening, that probably means that Mahomes is already thrown for like three touchdowns or something. So clearly Mahomes is one of the top plays on the slate. And then you have Travis Kelsey at 11K. We did see Travis Kelsey get injured in their last game against Minnesota, but he was able to return. He had 11 targets in that game, 10 catches for uh, 67 yards and a touchdown. He scored a touchdown in three out of their four games this season. He's seen at least nine targets in three out of their four games this season. Kelsey's been, you know, one of the best fantasy tight ends. He's going to continue to be one of the best fantasy tight ends. He's going to be a target monster in this Chiefs offense. He is kind of expensive, though, 11K. He is much much more expensive than someone like Russell Wilson, who I think is probably going to project a little bit better. So Kelsey's more of a, a tournament play, I think. I don't, you know, for cash games, I don't know if he would project well enough to be to make like a cash game lineup. I feel like you're probably going to want to prioritize getting both quarterbacks in for cash games. But for tournaments, we know the upside that Kelsey has. Um, I think he's firmly in play here. And then Russell Wilson, I think, is a very safe, high-floor option. Wilson, you know, we've seen a little bit more fantasy upside from him. He did have a really big game week two against Washington. Um, last week against the Jets, he was okay. Like, he's put up at least 15 DraftKings points in every game this season. The, you know, he's been throwing the ball a good amount as well, 30-plus pass attempts in four out of their five games. In what should be a you know game script where the Broncos are playing from behind, I mean, this is one of those games we could definitely see Russell Wilson have to throw the ball like 30, 35 times, maybe even more than that. Um, so at 9,600, I think Wilson looks like a pretty safe option here. Don't know if he's a guy that I would pr play in the captain spot. I think I'd be more likely to play his receivers at captain, whereas like I feel like Patrick Mahomes, you could probably play at captain like in tournaments because if Mahomes does have a really big game, he could, you know, the, the production could be spread around. Um, whereas like Wilson, I feel like his upside... 
I don't know if he has enough upside to where I would want to play him in the captain spot. I just I feel like I'd be more likely to play his receivers. Um, but both quarterbacks, I do like quite a bit in this game. I think both look very solid. Then you have Isaiah Pacheco's coming in at 9,400. Pacheco's in a really good matchup here. This Denver defense has not been able to stop the run at all this season. They've been arguably, I don't even want to say arguably, they have been the worst run defense in the league so far. So it's a great spot for Pacheco. The only thing I worry about with Pacheco is that he doesn't get a ton of usage in the passing game. And at this price tag, I mean, you kind of need him to get like four or five receptions to really be worth this price. He's not going to project very well at this price tag, I don't think, just because in order for him to really pay off this price tag, he's almost going to have to score a touchdown. If he doesn't score a touchdown, he is very likely to disappoint at the salary. I think he has a pretty high chance of scoring a touchdown in this game. You know, great matchup. The Chiefs should be able to move the ball down the field easily. On this Denver defense, they're probably going to be in the red zone a lot. They're going to be in goal goal line situations a lot. So Pacheco's fine. I just think if his ownership is going to be pretty high, he's definitely a guy that I would be okay fading. He's kind of similar to like a, a Brian Robinson. I think we talked about this last showdown slate when the Commanders and Bears played. Obviously, the the game script went south for the Commanders and they were playing from behind. But you know, a guy like Brian Robinson, he's a great runner. He's a great running back, but. He has to you know, get like 100 yards and a touchdown to really be worth the price tag that he was at on that showdown slate. That's kind of the same thing for Pacheco here. At this price tag, he probably needs 100 yards and a touchdown or you know at least one touchdown, maybe multiple touchdowns to be worth the salary because he's not going to go out there and catch five, six balls. Like He's at most going to see two or three targets. It's a great matchup, but I think Pacheco's a guy would be okay fading on this slate if his ownership is going to be high. Um, and then you have the, the Broncos receivers next. So you got... Jerry Judy is 9K. Cortland Sutton is 7,800. These are going to be the two guys that you know, play a large majority of the snaps for the Broncos at the, at the wide receiver position. You know, last week, you saw both guys play 86% of the snaps. They're going to be out there you know, for a large majority of the snaps. Now, this season, Jerry Judy, he's kind of been more of like the, the boom-bust option, whereas Cortland Sutton's been a lot, he's been the safer play. We've also seen the targets be a little bit more consistent for Cortland Sutton, although last week, Sutton did only see three targets. That was a pretty tough matchup for him, though. I'm assuming he, he got shut down by Sauce Gardner. But either way, um, yeah, I think both Broncos receivers are in play here. This is going to be a game where you would expect the Broncos to be playing from behind. If I had to choose one of the two, I think I would prefer Sutton for the discount, and I think he just has the higher floor. Now, for GBPs, obviously there's a big ceiling on Jerry Judy. He does offer some big play upside. Um, he's probably going to come in with less ownership, too, because you know he is so much more expensive than Sutton. So I think Judy makes a lot of sense to go to in tournaments. For cash games, I think Sutton's the more optimal play. But both Broncos receivers, I think, are in play here just because you expect Russell Wilson to have to throw the ball a lot in this game, and you expect you know, a lot of those targets to go to, to Judy and Sutton. So they're both in play, in, in my opinion. And then we have the Broncos running back situation. So this is one that's kind of tough to gauge right now. I'm recording this video on Tuesday afternoon. We haven't gotten any word yet on Javante Williams' status. Um, he was listed as a limited participant in their estimated practice report on Monday. I'm expecting Javante Williams to play this week. I think the reason he sat out on Sunday was just because they were on a short week and they wanted him to be ready for this game. So I'm expecting Javante Williams back. And if Javante Williams is back, it just makes this, this running back situation a little bit murky. Um, we did see Jaleel McLaughlin have a really good game last week without um, Javante Williams. He only got 12 touches, but he was really efficient with those 12 touches, put up 17 drafting points. There's, I'm not playing him. I mean, he's pretty much the worst. He's probably the worst play on the slate at 7K if, if Javante is back. But if Javante remains out, then I think you could consider McLaughlin. I still wouldn't love him at this price tag, but I think he would at least be playable. And we actually did see a good amount of opportunity for Samaj P. Ryan. He wound up playing 60% of the snaps last week without Javante, got, uh, got 10 touches. I'd have a lot of interest in P. Ryan at 5K. If Javante were to be out again, but again, if Javante returns, I pretty much have no interest in, in, in P. Ryan. So it's kind of a wait and see right now with the running back situation for Denver. If Javante does wind up playing, I think it's 7,200. He's kind of an interesting play here. I mean, his snaps this season have not been like, they've not been great. He's been, they've basically been running like a three-man committee at running back, the, the Broncos have. But Javante still would probably project to see like 10 to 12 carries and probably three or four targets. He would be my favorite of the Denver running backs if I had to choose one of the three. I don't love any of them on this slate. Um, but, you know, in a scenario where they do get behind, like I think Javante probably would still be out there catching passes. He definitely would have a little bit of a ceiling to him. He's obviously a really good running back. He's very talented. We just haven't really seen him post a big game yet this season. 
feel like with how talented he is, like there's going to be a big game that comes at some point. I don't know when it's going to be. Maybe this is the week Javante gets back on track and has a big game. Again, I don't love any of the Denver running backs on this slate, but if I had to pick one, I think it would be Javante, assuming he does wind up playing. Now looking at some other plays, you got Rasheed Rice, 6,400 for the Chiefs. He's really started to earn a little bit of a big role kind of each and every week. In week one, we only saw Rasheed Rice play. He only played uh, 20 or 31% of the snaps. He played 20 snaps in week one, but his snaps have really started to increase the last few weeks. In week three, he played 51% of the snaps. In week four, he played 46% of the snaps. Last week, he played 30% of the snaps. The Chiefs have been playing like six receivers every week. They've had, I'm pretty much, I think they've had six receivers active for every game this season. So they're going to run kind of like a rotation at wide receiver. Rasheed Rice is a talented rookie. I don't know like where he fits on this Chiefs team. Like I think if I had to rank him, I, I guess that he, I would say he's like the wide receiver three, but they're going to rotate a lot of guys. I don't really have a strong take when it comes to these Chiefs receivers. I think you're kind of throwing darts with a lot of these guys. Rice is the most expensive, which makes me think his ownership is probably going to be somewhat low. So if you want to go there in tournaments, I don't hate it. He's definitely not like a cash game play or anything. But, you know, for tournaments, he does have some upside. He did score a touchdown last week. I, I think he's playable, but not a guy that I'm, you know, super in love with on this slate. The defenses we'll hit on real quickly. I don't have really any interest in Denver's defense, I don't think. But the Chiefs defense... I mean, I guess they're fine, but man, I feel like they're going to be so overowned just because everyone knows this is a really good spot. The Chiefs are at home. They're facing a bad offense. They're facing a quarterback in Russell Wilson who will take sacks and will turn the ball over. I feel like a lot of people are going to play the Chiefs defense here. If they're going to be super popular, I'm always fine fading popular defenses. I pretty much will always fade popular defenses in tournaments um, just because defense is such a volatile position. In order for a defense to really kill you, they pretty much have to get like a defensive touchdown or they have to get a lot of turnovers, a lot of sacks. And I'll just bet on that like not happening. Um, again, the Chiefs defense is probably going to project well because it is such a good spot. But if the ownership is going to be there, I'm fine just avoiding them and, and looking elsewhere. I would rather just play some of these wide receivers that have you know, way more upside. Um, they might have a lower floor, but you know the upside is definitely there. Like Sky Moore, for example... He's been playing a good amount of the snaps for the Chiefs this season. Has not been able to earn a ton of targets, but he's been out there for 60-plus percent of the snaps almost every week. Last two weeks, he's only played 59 and 56 percent of the snaps, but he's still out there for like the second most snaps behind Markel's Valor Scantling. So at 5,400, I do like Sky Moore as kind of a cheaper value option. Jared McKinnon, I don't have a ton of interest in. I think Jared McKinnon really benefits in games where the Chiefs are playing from behind. This doesn't set up as one of the, those games. You know, they're obviously massive favorites at home here. He's not really been getting a ton of opportunity anyway, so not much interest in Jared McKinnon here. I think he's just a dart throw at best. We talked about P. Ryan, only considering P. Ryan if Javante Williams is out again. The kickers, I do have some interest in for value. I think the kickers are always fine to go to. You don't really get a big ceiling from kickers, but the floor is pretty solid. They usually always make for decent cash game plays. Usually you see uh, the kickers wind up being like the top, you know, they wind up being like in the cash game optimal. If you run projection sites, a lot of projection sites will spit out kickers in their optimal lineups just because they do tend to project pretty well for their salaries. So kickers, fine to go to for value. Then you have some of these other cheaper pass catchers, like Marvin Mims is 4,600. He's not been playing a ton of snaps this season for the Broncos, but when he has been on the field, he has been able to earn some targets, and he's been getting a lot of deep balls thrown his way. He's one of these guys that could only see like two targets, but he could still put up a good game on just two targets. I mean, in week three versus Miami, he had just three catches, but he had 16 draftings points on three catches. Week two against Washington, he had just two catches and put up 23 drafting points on two catches. He's got that big play upside. Um, he's not going to be on the field for a ton of snaps. You know, he's going to probably play like 15 to 20 snaps. That's what he's been playing like on a weekly basis. But at 4,600, if you want to take a shot on him, I think he's a GBP dart throw. Um, he's probably going to project pretty poorly at this salary, which should keep his ownership low. So he's a fine GBP option. Definitely not like in cash game, not a cash game consideration or anything. Noah Gray, I think DraftKings just priced him up because you know, there was a chance Kelsey would miss this game, but it looks like Travis Kelsey is going to play. So at 4,400, really no interest in Noah Gray at this price tag, assuming obviously that Kelsey's good to go. Marquez Valdez-Scantling at 3,400 is an interesting value play here. The dude is, I think, complete dust at this point. Like He's just not a good receiver, but he's going to be on the field for a good amount of snaps, and he has, been, he has played the most snaps of all the Chiefs receivers this season. 
that hasn't really resulted in anything. I mean, he only has seven catches for 116 yards through their first five games. But he's going to be out there running routes at 3,400. He's in play for value. I don't feel great about it, but he is cheap enough to where I think he is viable on this showdown slate. And then we have some other cheap receivers that I think are viable. So Adam Troutman has been operating as the number one tight end for the Broncos with uh, Greg Dolchich on IR right now. The game, the box score, I, would, I should say, for Troutman is obviously not very promising. I mean, you look weeks two through four, one target, two targets, one target. But last week, however, he did see five targets. He was able to get into the end zone, four catches, 26 yards, and a touchdown. He's been playing like 90% of the snaps on a weekly basis. Last four weeks, 82, 87, 88, and 90% of the snaps for Adam Troutman. He's going to be out there running routes. I mean, he is kind of their receiving tight end. So at 2,800, getting a tight end that's going to play 80 plus percent of the snaps for a team that's probably going to be trailing. This is a value play that I think does look solid on this slate. Um, I do like Troutman at 2,800 as a cheap option. And then a couple more cheap options you have you could consider. Justin Watson, you know, he's going to be one of these receivers that the Chiefs mix in. He probably projects to see like three, four targets. He's $2,200. I don't feel great about Justin Watson, but the last few weeks he has played the third most snaps of all the receivers behind MVS and Sky Moore. He's a punt play, I think, at 2200 He's definitely viable. Uh, Brandon Johnson has been operating as the wide receiver three for the Broncos. Hasn't really resulted in a ton of targets, but over the last few weeks, he's played 60%, 35%, 51% of the snaps. He's going to be out there for probably 50 to 60% of the snaps. He's only $1,200. I think he's a fine punt play if you want to go there. And then lastly, I will mention Clyde Edwards-Alaire. We did see Clyde Edwards-Alaire get a lot of opportunity in their Week 3 game against Chicago. And the reason I, I highlight this game, that was a massive blowout. The Chiefs won that game 41-10. to I mean, I'm not expecting this that type of blowout in this game, but no one would be surprised if the Chiefs go out there and just beat the crap out of Denver. And if the Chiefs do beat the crap out of Denver, if they're up by like three, four touchdowns heading into the fourth quarter, you could see Clyde Edwards-Alaire getting a lot of work late in the game if this game is like way out of hand. I don't think they want to risk Pacheco you know, getting injured or something. Um, so if this game gets ugly, like if the Chiefs go out here and blow them out, I think you could see a lot of opportunity for CEH late in the game. He's really cheap, $1,000. He hasn't really been able to earn a lot of opportunity outside of that blowout. I mean, besides that game, he's basically been getting like three, four touches a game. So he's just kind of like a GBP dart throw. But if you want to build sort of a game script where you think the Chiefs just go out there and beat the shit out of Denver, which is totally possible, if you want to build that type of game script lineup, I think you it makes sense to throw CEH into that lineup build because there definitely is a chance that if this game gets way out of hand, you could see CEH getting some carries in the fourth quarter um, if they're playing with a big lead. Um, so I did want to mention him as another punt play. And then you, you got a guy like Justin Ross down here at $600. He's not been playing a ton of snaps. He did earn four targets last week, but he did that on only only playing six snaps. I mean, getting four targets on six, six snaps is pretty impressive. When he was out there, he was getting targeted. But he's just a dart throw at best. Not a ton of interest in Justin Ross personally. Um, I think that's it. I don't think there's really anyone else down here that I'm really interested in. I mean, there's guys down here that have been getting snaps, but none of these guys have been earning targets. Um, like, I, I want to say, like, like, Jordan Humphrey, I mean, he's been getting some snaps for the Broncos. He is minimum salary, $200, but hasn't really been able to earn many targets. He's a punt play, I guess. He's he's fine, but, you know, not someone I think I would be considering. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it, guys. I think that's it for this showdown slate. I mean, I think we talked about pretty much everyone. We might have skipped we skipped over Kadarius Tony. I forgot to talk about Kadarius Tony at 4K. So Tony is another one of these guys that the Chiefs are gonna you know just kind of mix in throughout the game. His snaps though have been kind of increasing. So he did get injured in their week three game against um that week three game against Chicago. But then in week four, he did want to play in 24% of the snaps. And then last week he did get up to 38% of the snaps. He did play the fourth most snaps last week of all the Chiefs wide receivers. Yo, Tony, everyone has thought Tony would be really good. Like, he had that one good year with the Giants, and ever since then, he just hasn't really been much. He's been injured a lot. But the playing time has kind of been increasing for Tony, and he is a talented receiver, I think, even though he has struggled with drops this season. He's still cheap, 4K. He's playing in a great offense with a great quarterback. Of all the Chiefs receivers, like, between MVS, Sky Moore, Watson, Rice, Tony, between, like, those five guys... I mean, picking your favorite is so tough because I think it's just that you're just throwing darts when it comes to these guys. But I honestly think Tony might be my favorite of all the Chiefs wide receivers. When you factor in price tag at 4K, 
Um, like between Tony or MVS, I think I'd rather play Tony. I think Tony's just a more talented receiver. He's a guy that can earn targets, whereas MVS, even though MVS is going to be out there for a lot of snaps, he's just not been able to get open. He's not been able to earn targets. So at 4K, I forgot to talk about him, but yeah, 4K, I think Kadarius Tony is a really good value. Um, he's probably one of the better value plays on this slate, in my opinion. But that's pretty much it for this slate, guys. Again, I think we kind of talked about everyone. So appreciate you guys watching the video as always. I hope this video helped. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you hit that like button down below if you guys did enjoy. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And be sure to go check out Prize Picks, guys, sponsor of the video. You guys can sign up for Prize Picks. You can use my promo code, promo code NOAA. When you do sign up for Prize Picks, and you will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you sign up with my promo code. Um, do want to mention, you know, Prize Picks, again, they're a player prop site, more focused on player projections. On Prize Picks, you're just picking more or less on a player's projection. It is that simple. You can see they do already have props posted for Thursday night's game. They have stuff up already for Sunday as well. You can see all that's available on their board right now. And again, if there's any props that stand out to you, if you think a line is too high or if you think a line is too low, you take the over, you take the under, it's that simple. Uh, but again, on prize picks, you're just picking more or less on a player's projection. Um, it's that simple, that easy. You can win up to 25x your money over on prize picks. And if you guys don't have an account over there, get signed up, use that promo code NOAA, and you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. Uh, but good luck this Thursday night, guys, for this uh, Broncos Chiefs game. Hopefully, we get a good game here. I, I feel like we're probably not. I think this game's probably going to be ugly. It's probably going to be a blowout. But we'll see what happens. Either way, appreciate you guys watching the video, supporting the content as always. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.